All right, guys, welcome back to another V Rising video. We're going to be going over all of the passive abilities that have were added to the game in 1.0. Now, just to really quickly, you unlock these each of these passive abilities through the Altar of Stygian Awakening, which you get by defeating Elena the Hollow, who is a roaming boss in the new Mordium zone right here. And once you have that unlocked, you can unlock these passives. Once you have it constructed, you can unlock passives. But it, before you can do that, you actually need to earn some Stygian shards or greater Stygian shards from these incursion events, which you can track by constructing an Eye of Mordium. This is unlocked whenever you upgrade your castle to tier three. And once you have that, you can simply just open your map and you can see how long there is left in these incursion events. And... Uh, exactly, you know, yeah, you can just see, basically, they, uh, they appear at different times here, so they, they it'll start with tier 1s, and then it'll go to the tier 2 events. These are level 57 for tier 1s, and these are level 80+. plus. So, um, okay, anyway, let's go ahead and get into these passives here. We have three tiers. The first tier takes normal Stygian shards, the lesser ones, and the next two take... 600 or 1000 greater stygian shards so we're going to start from the bottom and go up and then i'm just going to try to say what i think the, the unlock order should probably be for these depending on what you you know how you how you build your character so uh the first one is going to be oh by the way one really important information you can unlock all of these and they are all active at all times this is really important information. And my first thought, when I first saw that, I thought that was kind of crazy. But then as I looked, I realized that it kind of all works together and it makes makes some sense. So here we go. Okay, so Blood Spray. This one was really revealed back in one of the dev updates. Critical Strikes heal for 5% and a 25% chance to spawn a Blood Orb whenever you kill an enemy affected by Leech. So one thing that's really, really interesting about this one, if you use something like Heart Strike, right? This right here will mark every single enemy that it hits with leech and then when they die it explodes out and also just puts leech everywhere and they splash each other like all the enemies splash each other so this is a really good way to get this activated every single one of those people that die from it have a 25 percent chance to summon a blood orb which is the same orb that you get from getting a boss down to half so a uh, pretty good ability but also it could kind of backfire on you in pvp if you were to heart strike somebody's skeletons yes you'll wipe them all out pretty much instantly um, if somebody is running skeletons, but the problem is it also has a 25% chance to drop a blood orb, which they can also heal off of. So there is like a world where you nuke all their skeletons and then they just heal themselves, right? <laughs> so, uh, next one, this is one of my favorite ones, Chaos Kindling. This is a crazy, crazy update here. So it says Ignite deals 20% increased damage and there's a 50% chance that a Chaos Explosion ignites enemies' hit. So Chaos Explosion, I believe this is the one that happens whenever somebody dies with Ignite. It triggers it, and there's an increase of the chance. This says nearby enemies when it explodes. Nearby enemies when target affected by Ignite perishes. Sorry. Triggers an explosion that deals 50% magic damage and ignites nearby enemies when a target affected by Ignite perishes. I actually don't know if this ignites enemies. I've tested it. Um, it doesn't always seem like it works. So this right here makes it a 50% chance, I guess. So yeah, this is a really, really good one because at the very least it's a flat buff to ignite damage. Really solid. Next one is an Arcane Animator. 15% chance to summon a Skeleton Mage when a Condemned target perishes and minions deal 10% more damage. So this is really, really good for like Skeleton builds or Summon builds, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's a lot easier now to get skeletons you know if we go to the unholy tree you have all of these but you also have jewels or like for, for instance veil of bones uh condemn if you just hit somebody with this it summons a skeleton warrior if they die it summons a skeleton warrior the corrupted skull has a jewel now where we'll do two projectiles instead of one and i know this used to be in the game in gloom rot but look at this it's now right next to each other so if both of those hit somebody it's two skeletons instantaneously so yeah, there's a lot, and you have two of them at once. So if you go like this, and both of those hit somebody, that's four skeletons within the blink of an eye, right? So yeah, and each of those, whenever you kill someone, who, you know, that, that's good for the minion bonus damage. The skeleton mage part, this is more so for PvE, unless somebody else has a bunch of skeletons, and then you're like summoning mages off of their skeleton kills, which would be kind of funny, because then they'd probably be doing the same thing to you. Next, we're going to look at Spiritual Infusion. 10% increased spell damage to weakened enemies. Pretty solid. 
and increase the duration of weaken by one second. Pretty solid. So this is actually really good if you're using something like Phantom Aegis, applying weaken to nearby enemies whenever they get close to you and you, and you apply uh, Phantom Aegis, you know, that's going to be nice because then your next spell damage is going to be increased by 10%. Super solid. Uh, this is probably the best one. Maybe, probably the best one overall in the tier one passives. Uh, all shields applied to you absorb 10% additional damage. That's including allied shields that are applied to you, by the way. And including anything that gives you a shield. So like Frost Ash gives you a bigger shield whenever you do that, right? Um, also gain 5% increased damage to chilled or frozen targets. Super good. And you're going to see why now down below here in the tier two passive, there's a, another frost one here that kind of synergizes really well with that. Uh, okay, lightning fast strikes. In increased primary attack speed by 5%. Really good, just a flat attack speed buff. And static triggers deal 20% increased damage. So flat buff to static damage, right? Static triggers. Super, super, super strong. So, all right, in the first tier of passives, I would probably put one, you know, stat lightning fast strikes, chill weave, and chaos killing. These are probably the three best. You can get i'd probably go chill weave first and then either chaos killing or lightning strikes, just, just depending on what you're using a lot of and then from there um i'd probably go and eh, i'd probably go blood spray because there's a lot of leech that is applied you know like with heart strike that's a little silly but i think it's actually over over overall it's really good especially for being out and about in the world where you can just take a little bit of damage here and there and your health kind of stays low and, then, and if you get jumped by somebody your health's a little low this will kind of help you stay healthy a little longer, a little more consistently. And then from there, I would just go Spiritual Infusion. And then, of course, if you are using a Skeleton build where you're summoning a bunch of minions, this is probably the number one thing you're going to want to, want to pick first. But if not, you can probably just toss this in last. All right, so Tier 2. 600 Greater Stygian Shards. We have Hunger for Blood, Increased Damage to V Bloods by 10%. This is uh, super nice on Brutal Mode, I will say. It's nice in all modes. It is good. Brutal mode's nice because you're trying to kill the bosses as fast as you can because they're so scary and they do so much damage. The more damage you do to them, the less likely you're going to get hit, right? <laughs> less time there is in the fight. So, but overall, I mean, this one's not super high priority unless you really want it. Or if you're playing like EVE only, this would be probably really nice for you. This is probably the best one, in my opinion. Uh, Turbulent Velocity gains 6% increased movement speed for 8 seconds when dealing damage to an enemy. That is really good. It's basically just a permanent 6% movement speed buff as long as you're hitting people. It doesn't say there's a cooldown on this. So as far as I know, this is just active as long as damage is happening to the enemy, right? So I also, I will say, I don't know if this also triggers off of like ignite. So if someone has ignite on them, is every time it ticks, are you just like, there's that timer resetting? I'm not 100% sure on that, but regardless, this is extremely good in PvP. Soul Drinker reduces the cooldown of feed by two seconds. Pretty nice. And there's a 20% chance to summon a Skeleton Warrior when triggering Bite. So yeah, this is really more so just a PvE ability. Again, if you're into summons, into Unholy, Unholy is wild now. You can get so many Skeletons so easily and so quickly. It's not even funny. And this just adds to that. You're just going to have tons and tons of Skeletons. Skinwalker, this is a mandatory passive pretty much as soon as you could possibly get it in my opinion, for PvP, because um, being able to... Normally, the 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 advantage... Or the there's, like, a thing in wolf form where it kind of is all up to whoever has the better movement and, like, pathing. If you're trying to run somebody down and they're trying to get away, whoever has the better movement and pathing is going to win that, that, you know, encounter. This is just a flat 8% movement speed. If you're chasing someone and they have 8% movement speed, you're not catching them. <laughs> Unless they make a huge mistake... You are not going to catch them. So, uh, yeah, this one's mandatory. Super good. Lingering Frost synergizes really well, in my opinion, with Chill Weave. 30% chance to apply Chill when, a, when Freeze is removed. This is extremely good because it means... So, this right here, if you remember, says a 5% increased damage to Chilled, Chilled and Frozen targets. So, essentially, imagine if you're running something like Cold Snap right here... And you triggered a counter, you froze somebody, boom, now you have 5% increased damage on them. That's super nice. Just a light, nice little buff. And then once you break that freeze, there's a 30% chance that they just keep chill on them, which means you're going to keep doing that 5% increased damage. So really solid.
Uh, next one, Elemental Resistances, Resistances is actually super good. Um, it's more of a PvE thing, but it's also very, very nice. Uh, the Morning Star, the legendary version of the whip, is called the Morning Star. And both of its moves apply a lesser burn, not ignite, not chaos ignite, burn, like from Flame Archers. It's a lesser version of that. So this would be really good in PvP in that instance because it would give you, a, at least if you're not running like a flame resist potion, it would give you a chance to resist some of those burn ticks. So overall, let's go through tier two here. I would say this is by far number one. This is number two. And then from there, uh, probably number three on elemental resists, number four on hunger for blood. Uh, you can also bump this chill lingering frost up if you're running frost builds. You can get this one for sure, like turbulent velocity, then lingering frost. And then the last one, again, unless you're a PvE or you're running a lot of skeletons, Soul Drinker would probably be the last one for me. And finally, we're on Tier 3. This is where things get absolutely crazy, like totally nuts, honestly. <laughs> this is Sanguine Mastery. This is by far, I, I, I honestly think this is probably the best passive of all the passives, maybe. It's in the top three for sure. Uh, boost the effect of your current blood type by 8%. What this does, it does not boost the percentage of your blood. So I have 51% Draculin. This would not make it 59%. It doesn't work like that. It, it works similar to the last tier bonus when you get that you get whenever you're at 100% blood. Um, it's just an additional flat 8% of the effects that you're already getting. Which means a 100% blood is now basically, from what I understand, 33% boosted not just 25. So imagine what Scholar is like with that. It's just wild. Next one, also insane. Embrace Mayhem increases cooldown recovery rate by 15%. So that means, I believe, so all, all ultimates have been buffed. They are now only 120 seconds um, between, so I'm gonna use one now. It's only 120 second cooldown now instead of 150. This is a 15% reduction to how fast this recharges. I want to say with this on, it's, I mean, I can't do the, I, I can sit here and do the math. I think it's something like 102 seconds, 104, something like that. I think it's 102. I know the math says that it should be around there, but it's like a, it's some kind of weird thing with the recovery rate. Yeah. Regardless, like 102 seconds, which is basically nothing. You could just spam ults with this. So this is for sure required. These two are going to be required. Dark Enchantment, one of the craziest. So it's funny how these two were really more so PvE, and this one is just crazy, if you think about it. I mean, I guess it kind of depends, but if you're running, like, shields and barriers to keep yourself healthy, this is a very, very good passive, especially if you're not running a tanky, like, warrior armor set and warrior blood, because I believe there's a damage reduction cap now. Um, I, and I'm not sure if it would go over that cap with this specifically, uh, but regardless, if you're running like a scholar build and you're using like some barriers or something to keep yourself kind of alive, having an extra 20% damage reduction whenever you're at low health is going to be really, really nice. Flowing sorcery, increased spell cooldown recovery rate by 5%, just a flat CDR 5% on your spells. And there is a 25% chance to not consume Phantasm when triggering a cooldown reset. This is, in my opinion, this is the single most interesting of every passive on here by far. 5% um, CDR is pretty cool, but a 20% chance to not consume Phantasm, the, dude, the clips that people are going to be posting of like their six resets with some kind of phantasm build or something, or if they use like a uh, phantom Agus and they get their phantasm stacks really high. And all of a sudden they're like casting like six crystal lances in a row or something, just freeze, 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 freeze like whatever over and over and over again with scholar blood. I mean, the combined thing here, the pr imagine you have this with scholar blood and this right here with some kind of phantasm stacks. And all of a sudden, you I mean, there's for sh like legit a possibility of just getting five resets in a row, <laughs> like like a solid possibility of that. So pretty crazy. And will it be very interesting to see what happens with this cold soul killing a frozen unit. So this is more of a PVE spell or it's PVE passive. You kill a frozen unit or inflicting freeze on an immune target like a boss triggers an ice nova dealing 25 percent damage and inflicting chill so yeah this is more so of a pve thing which is fine i mean it's pretty good it's also really helpful for things like uh cold snap giving a little bit of a buff into um 
a little bit of a buff into PVE. So if you were to like, uh, you know, if you're sitting there in PVE and you trigger a cold snap, freeze everything around you, and then hit them with axes, you could just like chain ice novas and kill a bunch of things all at once. And lastly, we have an enhanced con uh, conductivity. So 50% chance that chain lightning bounces one additional time. So what chain lightning is, static has a new passive here. So not only does it deal additional damage, it also, if somebody dies who has static on them, it will jump up to two times, deal 50% magic damage, and inflict static on that enemy as well. And this just gives you a 50% chance to jump another time. So basically, this is just solid PvE. Um, overall, in the tier 3 categories, I would say these four are by far the best. Uh, in order of importance, I would say it's a tie between these two here. Mm, maybe... It's hard to say. Between these two here, Embrace Mayhem and Sango Mastery, and then uh, Dark Enchantment for sure, and then Flowing Sorcery after that. So it's probably between these two, and then Dark Enchantment, then Flowing Sorcery, and then you just unlock these as you want or need them. Um, if you're not running a lot of Freeze, then this is kind of pointless. If you're not running a lot of uh, Storm or Static, this is also kind of pointless, but you might as well just unlock it for your whole squad. So anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Again, these are gained from the events here the incursion events and uh yep that's gonna be it thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and we will catch you in the next one